When Hurricane Lily hit the Louisiana shore back in 2002, it didn't do much damage. But it did leave meteorologists at the National Hurricane Center very confused. On this satellite loop behind me, you can see Lily coming in across Cuba. It became a Category 4 hurricane right here in the central Gulf of Mexico, but then it weakened down to a Category 1 hurricane at landfall. Dr. Max Mayfield is the former director of the National Hurricane Center. He says that over the years, his team got better and better at predicting a hurricane's track. But what we don't do a good job at is catching the rapidly changing hurricane, the ones that rapidly intensify, like Lily, and the ones that rapidly diminish, like Lily did before landfall. And being able to predict a hurricane's intensity is vitally important. You really do have to know the intensity of the hurricane because the evacuation plans are based on not just where the hurricane's going to hit, but on how strong it is. And there's a big, big difference between a Category 1 hurricane that might have uh, 4 to 5 feet of storm surge versus a Category 5 hurricane that could have above 20 feet of storm surge. Learning what factors ultimately help in predicting a hurricane's strength is the first step. One factor in helping to predict how strong a hurricane could be the Saharan air layer. This is the warm, dusty air that blows off of Africa. The dust in the Saharan air layer can actually act to change the microphysics in the clouds and actually reduce the hurricane activity and even the thunderstorm activity. It can also warm the Saharan air layer and create what we call a temperature inversion, which makes it very hard for the thunderstorm tops to bubble up through the atmosphere. It also contains a lot of strong winds that create vertical wind shear and very dry air that really knocks the punch, takes the punch out of hurricanes. Jason Dunyan is a meteorologist with NOAA's Hurricane Research Division. He believes the Saharan air layer is a major force in predicting which hurricanes boom and which ones go bust. Researchers can now see both the hurricane and the Saharan air layer at the same time. We can track the Saharan air layer, seen here in orange and yellow, and Hurricane Aaron. And you can see that the system actually becomes enveloped by the Saharan air layer. And this could be one of the reasons why this system struggled early on. But later in the time period, you can see Aaron pops out of the Saharan air layer and rapidly intensifies into a major hurricane. The next step is for researchers to learn more about the Saharan air layer. With this new satellite technology that we have, we can actually track the Saharan air layer and send our NOAA and Air Force hurricane hunters out to the Saharan air layer and sample it using GPS drop wind sondes. And they can help us measure the strong winds and very dry air in the air layer. And that may help us understand how the Saharan air layer interacts with hurricanes. And ultimately, this research is all about making our lives a lot safer. <laughs>